What's going on y'all? This is Marcus and I'm back with another video. This is my review for Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 6 Episode 14. And so the, of course we know it picks up where it left off last week with everybody fighting. It kind of does a continuation of um, Apollo. You know of course when um, Phaedra was trying to, she was getting ready to leave and Apollo started ripping off his shirt, ripping his microphone off. I think that's what it was that was taped to his chest, you know, so he ready to go after Brandon. Um, Portia and Lauren Lee, she started getting all spiritual, talking about she, talking about I see spirits and people's faces. She was like, it wasn't necessarily a demon, but it was an evil spirit. And I'm thinking to myself, an evil spirit and a demon is, I mean, one and the same thing. So it's like, yeah, I mean, which I understand because it's like she spent so much time around these people, so to speak, and she hasn't really seen this side of them, especially Candy. I hadn't never seen that side of her, although I was here for it. But anyway, um, let me see what else. So, you know, Candy addresses Natalie about, you know, what she said about Ty, you know, about she was saying that Ty was an opportunist. And, you know, she does come back and say, you know, I never said he was an opportunist. I said he was on the come up. Which, I mean, yeah, she never said the word opportunist, but everybody who was watching and the people that she, you know, when she, even when she told Peter and Cynthia, they knew what she was trying to say. I think it was Cynthia that actually used the word opportunist, if I'm not mistaken, when they were on the bus. So, Cynthia was basically saying, you know, she was basically saying the only reason she's brought it up or kind of mentioned it or asked um, Natalie, you know, how did she know Ty because of the stuff that's going on with Mama... I was about to say Mama D. With Mama Joyce calling Ty the opportunist and stuff like that. And so she was just like, I was just looking out for you. Um, so Cynthia, she's all up in, you know, uh, Candy's face doing all this. And, you know, Candy was kind of like, you know, you need to back up. You're doing all this in my face. You know, I, I'm not here for that. Which, And I understand where she's coming from. People that grew up in the hood, which I don't know where Cynthia grew up at, but I don't think she grew up in the hood. People, well, you know, when you grew up in the hood, this, all this in your face, no, that will get you pop. You don't do stuff like that. Whether you, I mean, whether you're a man or a woman, you know, I, you know, we don't play that kind of stuff. And so then, that's when Peter comes in, and somewhere I didn't really see, but some somewhere in this time, Mallory got up and she starts walking over. Which I mean, yeah, if that's your sister or whatever, you know. You you supposed to get up and go over there to see what's going on. You mean you not gonna really say nothing or not gonna really jump into it unless something pop off and your sister getting beat up. Then you know, but she you know she did the right thing. So Peter comes in and he's like, "What's going on?" Yada yada yada. Um, you know, if I, he was already feeling some type of way because of what Cynthia said that Candy told what Cynthia told him that Candy said about knowing stuff about his past. Yada yada yada. So he was already feeling some type of way. He told Candy and Todd that. Can't remember if he said they were acting strange or acting shady, something like that. He said something, and so he starts walking up on Candy. So that's when Todd jumps in, and he was like, "No, brother, you need to back up." Peter was like, "You know the rules," and Todd was like, "Rules? What rules?" I was like, "I don't know, Peter, because I, I think he's old. I think he's older than Greg, so he kind of feel like he runs something. Like he feel like he's the daddy in this group or something. I don't know, but anyway. So then, next thing I know, Todd pushes. Well, he kind of pushes Peter to do to like say you know you need to get back get back then that thing I know Mallory pushes Todd Candy gets mad because she said Mallory pushed her although I didn't I don't remember seeing Mallory push Candy I did see her push Todd and either Todd don't weigh that much or Mallory got some strong arms because it don't look like she pushed Todd that hard but he sure went flying after she pushed him so you know Candy was about to um go after Mallory but uh, I about to say Peter but Ty starts grabbing her as though she's upset because she's like you know don't grab me when I'm good which I understand I would have been mad too I mean I, at least let me get one good hit in before you start trying to grab on me and hold me back you know so Candy she all hype I will drag you and this and that and Mallory was just like you better get your friend get your friend cause I ain't playing but anyway sorry y'all my camera keep cutting off but anyway so you know, Candy is going off getting crunk with Mallory, and you know, Nene is keep telling her like, "You better than this. You got businesses and yada 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 yada." And I'm thinking myself, "Well, I'm gonna get on Nene in a minute." Okay, so let me see. Um. So Peter, okay, so Candy's going in the bathroom. Phaedra comes in there to see what's because Phaedra was outside that during that whole you know thing with a you know with Apollo. 
So she goes in the bathroom with Candy trying to talk. First of all, one thing, Candy need to stop trying to talk while she crying because she just sounds so, ugh, like, girl, don't do that no more. And this whole, so then, while they in there talking, Peter, and that's the thing, like, and I don't want to sound sexist, but that's the thing about men, like, men can, get, like, get into it, but they can talk it out and it be resolved, but women, is like, they hold grudges and be mad at each other for, like, weeks and months at a time. And then, and then, as when Peter was talking about, you know, the rules, you know, because because the rules on a lot of these shows where men are men are involved, normally the women are the ones that usually get physical. The men sometimes just argue and whatever, and then they, you know, they get over their issues and whatever they cool. So everybody leaves, um, and it and it. And it starts off, we were at Can Carmen and Can well, Candy's house, I say Carmen and Candy, we were at Candy's house, her and Carmen and Todd were talking about the fight, and then it switched over to Nene and Greg going to Cynthia and Peter's house, and then it was Kenny and Brandon, and it just kept switching back and forth, which kind of made it confusing for me, since, you know, when I was trying to take my notes, but anyway, you know, Candy talks, you know, talks, tells about the fight, you know, she kind of explains what happened, Todd made a joke about titties popping out and this, that, and the other, anyway. Greg and Nene come over to Cynthia's house. Nene talking about how she had to go see a therapist and this, that, and the other. And she's confused about what happened. She put everything on Kenya. I thought it was... I wasn't here for when Cynthia was doing her impersonation of Candy. I was like, she wasn't doing all that. You were the main one doing all the stuff with your hands. But anyway, so then King Brandon is at Kenya's house. He got a black eye. He had on sunglasses. He had a black eye. Um, I think he, like, his lip might have been busted or something. And then he had one of his, like, I think he said he cracked his ribs. You know, she apologized to him because she was basically like, you know, if I had known that this was going to go down, I would have never brought you. I didn't want this to happen to you. Um, they're both confused about the fight and they're both confused about why Apollo jumped on him. Um... Brandon, uh has a police report he at this point he's not quite sure whether he wants to actually file the police report because he's like if it was just him and Phaedra I would have had him locked up but because of Aiden and the newborn baby you know I'm kind of stuck in between a rock and a hard place but my thing is he won't thinking about Aiden and Dylan when he jumped on you he won't thinking about his children when he was allegedly writing them fake checks and stealing people's identities and uh, coming up with them fake companies and claiming people's money and this that and the other so I'm with Kenya on this one. He would have been under the jail had it been me. But anyway, well, first of all, I wouldn't have got Apollo wouldn't have jumped on me. But anyway, we're not gonna go there. So then it goes to Phaedra and Apollo. She comes in. I guess she was saying about how she failed her test. She didn't um and she didn't get to embalm anybody. She was talking about she stressed out. She just needs some time alone. And so then there's like an awkward silence. Phaedra is sitting there and Apollo is looking at her like with a smirk on his face like he's waiting for her to talk about the fight but she doesn't say anything so he's like okay it's my turn raise my hand teacher call on me so he starts bringing it up and you know he was talking about how Brandon put now I don't I don't remember Brandon punching him in the eye before this old started he might have punched him after he had him on the ground because you can see he was swinging and kicking but as far as him punching him first I didn't see that and then he said something about it after he pushed Brandon on a chair he went to go put his shoes on and then you know all that stuff and I'm thinking to myself unless they cut that part out as soon as he pushed him on on back on the beanbag chair that's he went and grabbed his throat so when when did you have time to put your shoes on like I'm confused and it's kind of like he was trying to water down the situation trying not to take it take as much of the blame and this whole time Phaedra was sitting there like mm-hmm hmm, hmm. Mm, like like in her mind there was like this alarm going off saying lie 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 because my man my mom watching it, he was like she he know he married to a lawyer that stuff he's saying is not gonna fly with her because she was just sitting there like but it's like you should have got him together you knew he you knew he was wrong for what he did like you should have put him in his place in my opinion candy has auditions Nope, none of them couldn't sing. And then I'm like, why everybody come in and sing? Because when that first person sung Amazing Grace, I would like watch everybody that come through that going to sing Amazing Grace. And I'm like, I got a hymn book downstairs. And if I'm not mistaken, it's like, if I'm not mistaken, it's like 500 and something hymns in that book. So why is everybody singing Amazing Grace? Like, I was confused. But anyway, nobody, could, none of them could sing. And then a lot of them people, they were trying to do all this extra stuff and do runs and this and that and the other. First of all, and I'm not, and I'm about to go kind of deep spiritual in the full minute, but 
a hymn, when you sing in a hymn, all them riffs and runs and stuff, that takes the anointing out the song. You can go through there and just sing the song straight. Sing it the way it was originally written and it will be just as powerful, just as anointed, if not more anointed than somebody that come through and sing all them riffs and runs. And then for some reason people feel like when you can do riffs and runs that makes you a better singer. Which is not because you can overrun and take the emotion and the feeling and the meaning out of the song. But anyway. So Candy calls all the girls to go through the spa. Por Portia Kump shows up first. Then it was Kenya, Cynthia, Phaedra. Nene comes in last. Nene's still pissed off because she was like nobody called her to apologize except Brandon. And she was like how did he get my number? And I'm saying first of all. At least he did call and apologize. And second of all. Who else you think he gave him the number? Unless he got it from Andy. Who else you think gave him the number other than Kenya? That's the only person he talks to that has your number. Like, but anyway, at least he did call and apologize. So, Portia, Candy, and Kenya go get massage massages. Nene, Phaedra, and Cynthia goes and get foot massages. Cynthia was like, she don't feel comfortable being in the same room with Candy after all that stuff jumped off. Whatever. So, Phaedra and them in there... Well, they was first. Um, they were showing candy, and then was getting massages. And uh, Kenya was trying to ask what happened because, of course, they left before the thing. with Kenya jumped off. I mean, when Candy popped off, and Candy kind of skirted around the issue, she didn't want to get into it. Phaedra and them getting foot massages. They was talking. She was talking about how her friend had got some kind of massage, and she said that it felt like they stuck their toes in her butt and this and that and the other. I was like, really, Phaedra. So, when they all sitting down eating tea, Candy apologizes for the way she acted at the party. You know, she was like, I'm sorry, you know, I was pumped up and yada, yada, yada. Um, and I can't remember if, I think it was Phaedra or Kenya, one of them said something. So then Cynthia addresses Candy. She was saying something about, now I don't remember Candy saying that she would kill Cynthia. I do remember, and then now she was talking to Mallory, really, but anyway, I don't remember her saying nothing about killing nobody. I do remember her saying dragging and I will F you up and yada, yada, yada. You know, Cynthia, and then so Phaedra tells Candy, like, I mean, Candy tells Cynthia, like, you was doing all this with your hands, and Candy was like, well, so are you. And then, um, I mean, Cynthia was like, well, so are you, and Candy was like, you can talk with your hands, but do it from over there. And I'm like, yeah, because Cynthia does have a thing, and I've noticed it more with Cynthia than with Candy, that Cynthia talks with her hands, but you don't get up in people's face like that. She was like, I was trying to get you to uh, understand what's going on, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> I, no. All this M no. Phaedra kind of brings up Apollo's behavior, but then she kind of like throws it on Brandon, bringing up the th when he got into it with Cordell in the last season. And uh, Kenya was like, "No." Uh, what did she say? Something about pr a prison fight. Basically, that's something that's always going to be thrown up about Apollo, the fact that he was in prison. And so Nene goes off on Kenya about. One thing I did find was funny when she said something about you got up and walked across that room in your diaper. I could have died. I dropped dead and came back to life. I was like, really? Anyway, and then when I was watching the Scorpion show, he said something that I was thinking. Kenya has the best comebacks. She has the best read, throws the best shade, but it's always in the confessionals. Whenever she's with that person, it's like, I don't know, maybe she has to go home and write some stuff down and then come back and do the confessional to say something smart. But it's like, it really ain't no, um, it's of non-effect if you're not saying it to that person. Like, So anyway, basically Nene tried to put everything on Kenya. Yes, Kenya had a part in it and she acknowledged her part. But Nene, well I'll say this. Cynthia should have never asked, this conversation between Cynthia Todd Christopher Williams and Natalie should have Todd should have never been in that conversation. Cynthia should have never brought it up on the bus knowing how Kenya likes to spill tea. Um, as far as the pillow thing is concerned, Christopher could have addressed Kenya from his seat. He's standing over Kenya, you know, this, that, and the other. Kenya should have could have got up, but she should have never walked over to Natalie. But at the same time, Christopher should have never grabbed um, Christopher should have never grabbed Kenya. Now, Cynthia, I mean, everybody was trying to say that Christopher didn't grab Kenya, but from whatever angle the cameras was in, whenever, because when they went back and replayed it, it was at a different angle than when it, the scene actually took place. He grabbed Kenya. So he should have never grabbed Kenya. Apollo should have stayed sitting down. He should have never jumped into it. Peter had it under control. Greg had Christopher in his corner. Peter had Brandon. So Apollo should have never jumped in it. And, you know, all that stuff should have would have never popped off. But anyway, that was pretty much the end of the episode. I want to thank you all for watching. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe. Share this video on Facebook and Twitter. And I will check you guys out later. Peace.